This duct run is only three feet long, but poor design can make the airflow behave like it's 100 feet long. So I built this fully functional miniature AC duct system to demonstrate in real time what really destroys airflow. I'm going to show you how small changes can make a really big difference and why some runs choke down airflow way more than others even when they're the same exact length. So when we reach a point when we're ready to lay out and design our duct system, we already know what piece of equipment we're installing. It's a certain brand, particular model, and we know exactly what kind of blower motor we're gonna be working with to deliver air through this duct system into the home. Now this blower has a static pressure budget. It's the amount of resistance that the blower can push against delivering air to the home efficiently without any problems. So in today's example, let's say the manufacturer has given us 0 0.50 inches of water column as a budget. This is the static pressure reading we would get with a manometer once the system has been fully installed, it's up and running, and it's delivering the airflow we need into the home through our duct system. If our design exceeds that budget, we start to pay penalties. Higher power consumption, less efficiency, longer run time, shorter lifespan of the equipment itself, and uneven temperatures throughout the home. On this little system, you're going to be able to watch those penalties start to show up in the numbers, right as good and bad duct design choices actually happen. Now, one of the first things we have to figure out when we start designing our system is how far away is the furthest room from where the unit is going to be located. So if our unit is going to be located in the basement, for example, the furthest room would be up on the second floor on the opposite side of the house. If our unit were to be located in an attic, our furthest room might be on the first floor or even down in the basement. The reason why we start with this room first is because if we can deliver the proper amount of air we need to properly condition that furthest hardest to reach room, all the other rooms in the house will get the air they need as well. And if we could do this staying under our static pressure budget, we're gonna have a really well-designed duct system. Now there's two measurements we need in order to determine the distance between the unit and the room itself. Um, and that is an actual linear measurement we would just take with a tape measure. So we're just talking about how many feet from point A, the unit itself, to the register that's actually going to be delivering air to the room. Now, sometimes this is done by actually physically measuring distances within the home itself, like across the basement and then up to the second floor. Sometimes you can actually do this just based off of blueprints. But either way, we wanna get a general estimate on the distance in feet from point A to point B on our longest supply run. Now, the second measurement we need on top of this is a measurement in feet, but it's not a measurement you take with a tape measure. Every piece of ductwork that we add to this run, aside from a straight piece of ductwork, is going to have a measurement in feet associated with it. So if we placed a collar on the main plenum that we attach ductwork to, we're going to have to measure that in footage as well. If we have an elbow that turns from horizontal to vertical, we have to measure that elbow as well. Now, even though these pieces might only be inches or one or two feet long, the amount of resistance in these fittings actually is the equivalent of a certain number of feet of straight ductwork. When you look in a manual deep book, it's gonna show you a bunch of different types of fittings. And with those fittings will be something called an effective length or EL. Now what that basically means is that particular fitting has a certain amount of resistance to it that is the equivalent of a straight piece of ductwork. A soft radius 90, for example, will have an effective length of resistance that would be equal to, let's say, 35 feet of straight ductwork, and that's the number we're gonna be using. So even though the air is only flowing two or three feet through that particular 90, we have to use the number of 30 or 35 feet. And everything we add to this duct run is going to have its own effective length. If we use a reducer fitting, that is going to have an effective length associated with it. Any kind of boot on the end of that run will also have an effective length. The registers we actually put on the wall also have an effective length. We have to add all these up to the linear measurements we started with to get a total number. So let's say our ductwork has to run 20 feet across the ceiling of the basement, and then it has to go straight up 15 feet to get to that furthest room. That gives us a total of 35 feet. 
Now we also have to add an elbow on that turn, so that's going to be another 35 feet right there. We're going to have to put a boot at the end of this run with a registered grill on it as well, um, and that could be another 35 feet. So even though the physical length, according to a tape measure of our supply run here, is less than 40 feet, the amount of resistance the blower has to push against to get all the way through this run is the equivalent of 105 feet. So here's our static pressure on just the supply trunk alone. And you could see we're at about 0.09 to 0.1, somewhere in that ballpark. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add this nice soft radius 90 on the end of this supply run. And we're gonna see how much static pressure it actually adds to our supply side. So you can see by adding this 90, we went from about 0.10 to 0.15. So we're adding more static pressure just from that one fitting. Now let's make a bad decision. Let's put this really hard 90 on there instead of that soft radius 90. And let's see how that affects our numbers. Now you can see that hard 90 has us peaking at about 0.20 inches of water column, almost double what we started off with when we had no fitting at all. The difference between that radius 90 and that hard 90 can actually add an extra 50 feet of effective length to our run, even though we physically did not extend it an extra inch. Now, everything we just discussed on our supply side of the trunk system also has to be done on the return side. So if we had a one central return in the whole house, that would be the effective length we'd have to calculate there. If we had individual returns going to every room, once again, we would use the return that's the farthest run, which let's say is going to our same room. So let's say for simplicity's sake, our return run is going to the same room and it's the same length. So we add these two runs together and that is our total effective length. So in this case, this would be about 210 feet. Now, once we have this number, what we have to do next is we have to subtract values from our total static pressure budget um, that goes into things that are not part of the actual duct system. So I'm talking about the evaporator coil, a type of filter we're going to use in the system. So let's say, for example, we're going to use a very high efficiency coil and the pressure drop across that is 0 0.20 inches of water column. Let's also say we're going to use a one inch pleated filter with a high MERV rating, um, and that's going to give us another 0.15 inches of water column drop. So we're going to add these two together and we're going to subtract those from our 0 0.50 static pressure budget. And that is going to leave us with 0.15 inches of water column to play with our ducts. And that is our remaining budget. Our total effective length, as we already determined, it was 210 feet. And this gets all plugged into a formula you find in manual D that gives us our friction rate. So once we plug these numbers in, we have a friction rate value that we can now use on our duculators to size the duct work we need to run. So you can see this number isn't just picked out of thin air, we actually calculate it. Now this might all sound like a lot of complicated engineering level stuff. But this is actually good information for pretty much everybody to know. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a service technician, a lead installer, um, even as an install apprentice, this is good information to have because your first couple of weeks on the job, you're probably really running a lot of flex duct work. And if a lead is telling you stretch that flex out don't put hard bends into it do nice soft bends there's a reason behind it and this is why how you run that flex work can affect how hard a motor is running how hot those windings might get what the efficiency of the system actually is in the end of everything and it can really affect the performance of the system now there's a whole lot more to manual d than just this but those two main numbers the total effective length and our friction rate are the two big ones that we start off with when it comes to proper duct design. Hopefully that video helped you guys out. Thanks for watching. Love to see you on the next one.